to learn to live the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Click the bell notification. It's all free. So before I get into this video about our vice president making a, a warning, I wanted to talk about a few things first to kind of roll into what she has said. I've told you many times that firewood to me is just, it's, it's a commodity, it's, it's pride, there's something to it. I really enjoyed the splitting the firewood. I, there's just, everything about it is, is really great. I, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. I can break it down into numbers. For example, one truck load would be $75 if I had to go buy it. I can heat my little tiny house here with one cord. One truck load is one third cords. So I think if my math is right, about $225 is what it would cost me to heat my house for an entire year. But one of the things I'm trying to do is get as much firewood that I can for free uh, from people who are cutting down trees. In my mind, that's environmentally sound. This load here, this is two loads of firewood right here. It came from a, a place just down the road from us, uh, really close actually. She said when she cut down another tree that we could have that tree as also. So just messaged me, what, two days ago? And said that it was ready to have another load of firewood for us. So on Friday, I'm going to go get that. I can go get it anytime I want, she said. It's a vacation home for her. So she first time we went there, she wanted to be there. But now she trusts us. She said we can come and get it anytime. But it's so darn hot. It's I, I just don't want to work in this heat. So we're going to wait until Friday. This is, I think, Tuesday. That would be a full cord of firewood from that place. And I just got so much more I got to split. I got to split this stuff over here. This is fairly old wood, but it's still pretty wet, I guess, because it was laying on the ground. So we'll get that split and, and stacked. And then I got, I think, another cord of firewood. No, two-thirds of firewood over here. And this is huge. These are just huge rounds of firewood. Again, got to get that split and stacked. So... I got plenty to do this fall on stacking firewood. So I guess I got two cords of wood out of all this. That'd be, uh, I guess, 10 cords of firewood. And my goal is to have 15 cords of firewood that will last me 15 years. Of course, I would get it every year. And then when I get too old where I can't cut firewood anymore, then I'll have 15 years left. Now, I've had this similar feeling with the chickens. I've got a real pride with the chickens. Again, there's money involved, but that's not the only subject. It's just, it's mine. I'm producing something that most people have to go to the store to get, just like the firewood. Most people have to go to a company to get the heat. I don't have to go to a company to get the heat. I got the heat right here. Well, the same thing with the chickens. The chickens are food. They're, they're something that I, I don't have to worry about. Now, as you know, I've been trying to transition the littles and they, you may not be able to see them very well but they're in here right there and the reason they're hiding out I don't even see them all oh there's some more back here and the reason they're hiding out is we're trying to transition these guys to get used to these guys well vice versa actually these guys need to get used to the littles it's a slow process it's gonna take up to two weeks now we've been isolating Frenchie Fr Frenchie's a rooster and my fear was, was he was going to be mean to the littles. Well, last night he escaped from his little confinement. I got a little confinement over there that I made him. And I didn't see anything wrong. He, the littles didn't seem scared of him. Well, today I put him back in the confinement and he escaped again. I'm not sure how he's getting out, but he's out. And I've been watching him. He does not care in the least about the littles. Not at all. They'll come up right to him. He doesn't care. There is a hen here, though. I don't know which one, who probably the one closest to him there. I don't. Who goes in here, picks on him, and then comes back out and picks on him. So she's being very mean to him. So it's just the pecking order thing that we we've got to get used to. Maybe this is the one. Yeah, she's gonna come in. She's gonna be mean. See, she pecked. And I don't understand why, because those Rhode Islands that she just pecked on. Now there's Frenchie, he's gonna go in. They're all gonna come out. There's the hen that's mean, right there. It 
See, Frenchie doesn't care. Not at all, just ignores them. But at least it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought Frenchie would just tear them up, but not so far. Now there should be an egg in here. I thought I'd grab an egg for you just so you could see the exciting event. You know, I get about three eggs a day, two to three eggs a day, pretty consistently. But I sure do wish those littles would start producing. I got three or four of them that should be producing. They're just not doing it yet. And then we got the meat birds. And the meat birds, they're eight weeks old this coming Thursday. And we thought about butchering them at eight weeks. That's what we're supposed to do is eight weeks we're supposed to butcher. But what we discovered was is we only have three roosters. I don't know why we only have three. The rest of them are are hens and they're not the hens aren't as big so we were hoping for 10 pounds of chicken meat per chicken so what we we're going to do is start butchering at eight weeks start butchering the the roosters another batch nine weeks so forth and so on it just didn't work out that way so we are going to wait a while up to 12 weeks we can butcher anywhere from eight to 12 weeks if we wait through 12 weeks i'll have to butcher pretty quick because they can't live past 12 weeks very healthy That'd be another 230 pounds of meat, maybe. Maybe a little bit more cost involved because we're hanging on to them longer. I'm not sure that the, the they'll eat more food than what we'll actually get out of them. But with the prices going up right now, it's still worth it to go ahead and let them grow because the chicken prices in the store are outrageous. Now, we haven't been to the grocery store in a very long time. We haven't even went and gotten bread in a while, simply because we got eggs now, so we've been eating eggs for lunch. I used to eat peanut butter for lunch, but the eggs have completely replaced the peanut butter. Uh, we're becoming more self-sustaining when it comes to food all the time. I can't even remember the last time we went to the grocery store. It has to have been at least a month. It's been forever, and the freezer's still mostly full. Now, we did go a couple times because we saw some sales at Save-A-Lot, and if you'll remember, I bought hamburger, uh, big rolls of hamburger for, I don't know, 10 bucks, 10, 11 bucks. They were extremely cheap. And so we canned the hamburger. Now I haven't shown the canned hamburger since we actually did it, but it turned out very nice. They sealed up very well. Of course, there's a little bit of grease at the top. The rest of that liquid is just water. So we haven't eaten any, we're pretty excited about that. But of course we still have a full freezer so we don't have to worry about it. So come, mid-september so about a month we'll uh, start butchering so we'll i mean we're just going to be really busy all at once here in the fall i gotta split wood we gotta be butchering but that's okay there's something to do i mean the fall time and the spring times when we get most of our work done anyways winter time of course we slowed way down in that cold snip spell this summer has not been too bad we get you know a week here or there that's been really hot but the rest of summer has been pretty cool so i've been pretty active this summer and we don't have air conditioning we've done very well a lot of people were concerned that we weren't going to be able to do this without air conditioning but carolyn's pretty sensitive to the heat she struggles in the heat more than i do of course i'm just the opposite i struggle in the winter more than she does she's been doing really well we got the windows open we got one little fan just a little 12 volt fan she sleeps with that right in her face at night. And I've been trying to encourage folks to live their dream, but obviously this is an off-grid channel. We're living our dream, we're very happy here. It's something that I've always wanted to do without realizing it was something I always wanted to do. I used to be a conspiracy theorist and I used to think that the world was gonna implode. And so I was always trying to prepare. Well, here I am just prepared, I'm just happy. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't feel like I'm a prepper. Even though a lot of people says, yeah, you're a prepper. Just because I'm prepared, I don't think that makes me a prepper. I think it just makes me living my life the way I live it. I've been trying to caution people that we probably need to worry about food. Food has been a thing that I've been worried about for the last several months. There's just this rumor, nagging rumor, this thing that's going around that just kind of says, you know what, maybe we should think about food. It wouldn't be the first time in history we've had a food supply problem we had a chicken supply problem in the winter. Maybe we should be hoarding food, prepping food. And the thing is, is if you prep food and you don't need it, well, you still need food anyway. So in six months, if the whatever happens doesn't actually happen, no big deal. You just eat the food that you prepped, that you stored. So I just read and I confirmed it from a second source. You can Google this, it's out there. 
that VP Harris said that if you need to start buying your Christmas presents now because there is going to be a supply shortage by then. So don't wait, you need to do it now. Normally, I don't trust the media and I don't trust the government, but in this particular case, it would actually seem bad that she said it for the administration. When she said it, that this actually could hurt her political chances. So that would tell me that even though she knows this is gonna hurt her politically, maybe there's something that we need to worry about. It might be better to warn us now to go out and get Christmas presents than it is to wait and not be able to get Christmas presents. That might be worse for her. So maybe that's why she said it. Regardless, it's strong enough warning to me that maybe we don't worry about Christmas presents. Maybe we worry about food. We're gonna need to eat. We're gonna need to heat our houses. Is there gonna be a gas shortage? Is there an electrical shortage? There was in Texas last year. So let's th start thinking about this now while we're still comfortable. So if you're worried about Christmas presents, you can do what my mom did. She, Carolyn just had a birthday. Mom made her a picture. Uh, she does these beadwork and it's very pretty. Carolyn's in there hanging it now. So you may want to consider making presents. as something to consider if you're short on money because food is going to be an issue. So if you have to stockpile food to be ready for December, Christmas needs to be better thought out. I hope I can inspire you to think about the future so you can eat when you're living your dream. Thanks for watching.